If you're interested in 3D printing wearables and like the idea of dual color or dual material 3D prints, or even helping reduce your print time by printing two things at once, this printer may be for you. I've been 3D printing wearables with desktop 3D printers for a while and I'm always looking to take my projects to the next level. The Sovel SV04 IDEX 3D printer does just that. IDX stands for Independent Dual Extruders, which means you can switch between extruders or do dual color 3D prints, and it can also do multi-material 3D prints, or even print with both extruders at the same time. After seeing a few of the prints on Sobel's Instagram page and videos done by other creators, I was really excited to try out this 3D printer and share my review with you. Sobel sent me this machine free of charge for this review, so let's get into it. The Sobel SV04 machine is an FDM 3D printer with a 300mm by 300mm by 400mm build volume. If you're thinking about getting into 3D printing things like textiles and having a large build plate is really really valuable. This because you can print large textile pieces or even shoes. The printer's regular price is about $5.99 but you can find it at a markdown price regularly. Sobel does ship printers to and from multiple locations in the world as well. The printer comes with some valuable features like both of its extruders being direct drive, four different print modes, auto bed leveling, and easy to use touch screen which includes the opportunity to pause and resume prints as well filament runout sensors, removable flex build plate, and even an all metal hot end. Now I do want to caveat that I don't know a lot about the mechanics of 3D printers or the electronics aspect of it. I'm not very tinkery or savvy when it comes to making my own fixes if a 3D printer isn't running by itself. So I can provide my perspective as, how, as to how beginner friendly the printer can be. That may be helpful to you. The unboxing and setup for the printer was really simple and intuitive. I followed the provided guide as well as Sovel's YouTube videos regarding assembly um, and there were few items that were labeled which was definitely helpful. There were a few basic tools included in the kit along with two small spools of filament, an SD card with some g-code files that were all ready for printing, and some extra SDLs in case you want to do your own slicing and test out print settings. Now since the printer has two nozzles, I was really happy to see some detailed instructions provided in both video and PDF form with pictures which are essential. And it pretty much describes how to set these up correctly so that they are aligned when printing. These were fairly easy to follow and the print files that were used for setting up were relatively small prints so that you didn't use up a lot of filament when you were testing things. And there were also fast prints, which is appreciated because the less time you spend setting up, then the faster you can get to actual printing. A unique thing that the printer has are these silicone nozzle swipers and a little dump bucket so that when the nozzle is heating up, the filament can stay behind on the little dump bucket and then the nozzle gets cleaned by the little silicone before coming back to the print. I think that's pretty cool. So the printer does have auto bed leveling and some auto bed leveling aiding features. I did have some issues with bed leveling. Sovel has a video and walks you through their suggested bed leveling process, but even when following it really carefully, my nozzle was still too close to the printer bed and would cause the filament to get sort of bunched up when it was trying to be pushed out. Other times my print would just be close on one side, but then just right on the other side. So it meant that the bed was kind of warped. Now I should say, this is my first 3D printer with a BL Touch technology. So it took me a few tries to get the hang of it. And it's a slightly different method than just using the good old paper method, which is what I've used in the past. But this video right here is the one that helped me solve all my problems. In the end, my nozzle was homing incorrectly and it ended up being kind of an easy fix. In my case, I just needed to adjust the Z height within the printer and save it in order for it to home properly. I added a single line of code into the slicer profile per the video's recommendation. And it's something that I've never done before, but it was easy and quick and I didn't ruin anything, which was a win in my book. I won't go into it with too much detail, but I'll leave a link here and send all the bed leveling views his way. Also, one of the coolest features that you actually have with the printer is that you can stop it while it's printing and adjust the Z height in case you're noticing that it's too close or too far away. Aside from those first extruder alignment prints, the first prints were these dual color XYZ cubes, and these were from G codes that were provided from the SD card. These were printed with the two spools of filament that were also provided, and then I tested tested out some of these same cubes with TPU to test out different materials and, and tweak my print settings according to the printer. 
I also printed some benchies with the provided PLA as well as my own PLA. Using the 3D printer single mode, I started to print out some of my TPE textile swatches. Now the printer had a hard time printing with these softer TPE materials. Even when I adjusted the tension knob, it would still pull the filament a little bit too hard and this is how I ended up with these swatches. I reached out to Sovol and they clarified that the printer works best with TPU of a 90A short hardness and above and it was printing with an 82A short hardness filament. I then printed with some Resiflex, which is a spool of recycled TPU from the footwear industry, and it printed pretty great. And I tweaked my print settings to alter the info settings so that it has this really great stretch. Unfortunately, some of the strands were still a bit close together, so it doesn't open up as much in all parts of the swatch. And this was mainly because I was still having the nozzle too close to the printer bed issue. I also printed out some pieces for this large faux leather feeling TPU skirt and even tried out using a mirror to give the textile this really shiny and sort of reflective texture. And I'll go into more detail on how I made this skirt in another video. Now I was really excited to try out the printer's dual mode. Do you remember this project? Project, I think this dress took the same amount to print as it did to assemble. I was thinking that I could go back and create another houndstooth like textile with this printer's dual mode um, and not have to like assemble it later with a 3D pen. Now something important for this dual mode is that Sovol suggests that you use their own slicer which is pretty much a Sovol version of Cura. To use dual mode you just select it from their drop down, assign a model to each extruder, as assign a material profile to each extruder as well, and then you merge the models so that they fall into place with each other. Now something unfortunate about this slicer is that it's not available for Mac. So I fortunately had an old Windows computer and was able to download it and make it work there. But if you do have a Mac, keep this in mind. After slicing, I was finally ready to print myself some dual extruder houndstooth textile. And it was just so beautiful seeing it as one whole piece, honestly. All TPU, no holes, no rough 3D print seams. And I just, I really like it. And so I took this houndstooth swatch and the previous swatch that I met that was kind of stretchy and fuse these together with a 3D pen to make a small little wallet purse. I really like how it came out and I think this has a lot of potential for creating larger bags or maybe the same dress that I made just in a smarter way. Now what's harder than printing TPU with one extruder? Printing TPU with two extruders. I did get some jamming at times, um, but it's mainly because that knob just holds the filament really, really well and the filament that I was using was fairly stretchy even for a 90A short hardness filament. It was a little bit elastic since it's technically a TPE. I also wanted to try 3D printing on fabric and seeing if I could 3D print two colors onto a textile. I printed about three layers of the print and then paused it, taped some nylon mesh to the build plate, resumed the print, and then the nylon mesh sort of that sandwiched in between the layers of the 3D print. Next I modeled up a couple of eggs and I sort of eyeballed the alignment of these on the slicer. Basically, I didn't really follow instructions on how to get them aligned correctly, so my bad. And as you can see, this resulted in some gaps between the yolk and the white parts, but it was all right. Like, I still eyeballed it and they still ended up printing relatively nicely. Now, one of the aspects that got me really, really excited about dual mode is the fact that you can print with dual materials like PVA, AKA dissolvable supports. I'd never printed with PVA filament before, but I have desperately needed it in the past. Is this review just turning into how my past projects could have been better if I had this 3D printer then? Maybe. Well, what I was saying is that I made this purse a while back and it was extremely hard to remove the supports on it. So I wanted to make a mini version of this purse. The cool thing that it's kind of like a little lantern purse, so I can put lights inside of it still because it's translucent and it's like a little light bulb that I'm just carrying around. I'm so excited about the new things that I'm going to be able to print because of this dual extruder technology. Even though I really, really like dual mode, I think mirror mode also has a lot, a lot of potential and value. I was really excited about it because the printer also has a large build plate. And this is great for 3D printing shoes. 
I had an upcoming trip back home where the winters are quite warm, so I wanted to print out some sandals for when I was there. I modeled up some simple soles with holes sort of to loop some straps into, and I thought it would be kind of cool to have a sandal be white and the other one be black. So I printed the black sandal with Resiflex and then the white one with Filoflex 95A. So two different types of TPU, but I used the same print settings for both of them and it worked really, really well. You're essentially printing two shoes in the time that it takes to print one shoe. So similar to the mirror mode, the duplicate mode is great for items that you're printing a lot of. You're essentially printing twice the amount of the same thing on the printer because you have two extruders working simultaneously similar to the mirror mode. I use this feature to print the loops for the sandal straps. Now something you may have noticed or caught on to as you've been watching this video is that I have been printing on a different printer bed than the one I ran my test prints on, which is the one the printer came with. This is because early on when I was 3D printing TPU onto the original printer bed, it was just adhering too well. The printer bed is really, really porous and the prints were getting really stuck and I was also having that nozzle issue, which was, you know, the nozzle was too close to the printer bed. And then I did really, really poor research and I thought that I could clean it off with some acetone. Terrible, bad mistake, don't do that. I could still use the printer bed then, but I wanted to switch to something else because I usually like to use that first layer as the finished layer because um, it really get, gives a nice clean look to the prints and to the wearables. So I went on the Sobel website and they have this PEI sheet that you can purchase. And that's one of the perks of having a flexible, removable bed because I could just take off the old one and I could use it for other things like PLA and PETG because it does have a really, really good gripping surface. Um, so does the PEI sheet though. Well, in my mind, the PEI sheet is just a good upgrade. That's kind of what I'm saying. You don't have to get it. I got it personally. They didn't send that to me. I purchased it because I wanted it and it seemed to work better for the types of projects that I was doing. Overall, I think there's a lot of really great things that this printer has to offer. My mission with it was thinking about the different wearables that can be made with it. Um, and no printer is perfect, but I think it has a lot of really great things going for it, especially at this price point. I mean, the removable large printer bed, the dual extruders, this mirror feature that is so valuable, and the fact that you can reduce your print time with the duplicate feature are all really great features. Something that I wish would be better is that the slicer could be available for Mac users not only Windows users, that way um, everyone can have the same accessibility to printing files easily um, in their version of Cura, which was really easy to use. And although Sovol does mention that their printer is specifically for a 90A shore hardness CPU or higher, I wish that the extruders were slightly more gentle when gripping um, the softer TPE. If they were, they would be able to print more types of TPE and TPU and even more flexible materials, widening the spectrum of materials that the printer can print with. Sovol also sent me their filament dryer, which works wonders. Here's a quick example of some TPU prints came out before and after using their filament dryer and no print settings were actually altered between these prints. I just used the filament dryer for about nine to 10 hours on the spool and it just and it giving me better results. All links and details are in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.